Indian historiography, various ideological frameworks, colonial historiography. So now, uh, till now, historiography we have seen was divided into the on the basis of uh, time period, or we can see the era, uh, wherein we have seen the ancient historiography, we have seen the medieval historiography, and the modern historiography as well. In this section, we are going to see the Indian historiography, which is uh, basically divided on the ideologies, say so based on based on the topics. So here we are going to study about the colonial historiography. The early scholars who studied and wrote Indian history were mainly British officers and Christian missionaries. Their prejudice is clearly reflected in the way some of them have ridiculed Indian culture. Their writings were used to justify the colonial British rule. The five volumes of Cambridge History of India, published during 1922-1937 CE, are distinct examples of colonial historiography. So children, we can see the earlier histor uh, scholars who studied and wrote Indian history were mainly or mostly the British officers and the Christian missionaries. And they had some prejudiced notion or pre-notion of about the Indian culture and which can be clearly seen in the in their writings. So they have tried to ridicule. Ridicule is to look down or to laugh at the Indian culture. Their writing were used to justify the colonial British rule. So in their writings they have justified, they have, uh, uh, they have written that how correct it was that the Britishers had colonized uh, India. The five volumes of Cambridge History of India published during 1922 to 1937 CE are distinct examples of colonial historiography. So here in the adjacent picture you can see the Cambridge history of India. Moving ahead the next section is the orientalist historiography. Next ideology is the orientalist historiography. Many European scholars felt curious about civilizations and countries of the East. Some of those scholars felt admiration and respect for them. These scholars were known as orientalist. So the countries in the East where some of the European scholars, they felt very curious. They wanted to know more about the civilizations and the countries of the East. So some of those scholars felt admiration and respect. Uh, they felt very something great and something, you know, worth giving respect or like something very nice and very uh, different and uh, something, you know, which is worth praising, you can say. So these scholars who felt really admiration and respect, uh, respect for the countries of the East were known as these scholars were known as the Orientalists. The Orientalists studied the similarities between Sanskrit and some of the European languages. They focused more on Vedic traditions and Sanskrit literature. Their studies resulted into formulation uh, formulating the notion of the ancient language that could be the mother of Indo-European languages. So these Orientalists, when they, uh, they studied the similarities between the Sanskrit and the other European languages, they focused more on the Vedic tradition. We all know that India has a very good Vedic tradition. So they studied the Vedic tradition as well and the Sanskrit literature also. And their studies resulted uh, into the formulation of notion they formed a notion after their results that after their studies that an ancient language could be the mother of Indo-European languages. So these can be the ancient language that could be the mother to all the Indo-European language. So they felt that some of this language can definitely mother of all the Indo-European languages that were known then. In 1784, Sir William Jones founded Asiatic Society in Kolkata. In 1784, Sir William Jones founded Asiatic Society in Kolkata. He opened the doors for research in ancient Indian literature and history. Among the Orientalist scholars, Frederick Max Miller observed a special mention. Orientalist scholars, Frederick Max Miller deserves a special mention. In his opinion, Sanskrit was the most ancient language of the Indo-European languages. He was deeply interested in Sanskrit literature. He first translated the Sanskrit text of Hitopadesh. He was the editor of 50 volumes of the sacred books of the East. He also compiled Rigveda, which has been published in six volumes. He translated Rigveda in German. 
so children we can see amongst the oriental scholars frederick max muller was the uh, really deserves a special mention because he was of the opinion that sanskrit was the most ancient language of the indo european languages and he was deeply interested in sanskrit literature he was so influenced and he was so motivated by this language he was so attracted to the language that he first translated the sanskrit text of hitopadesh and he was the editor of 50 volumes of the sacred books of the east he also compiled rigveda which was published in six volumes he translated rigveda in german language as well lately edward said a scholar who has reevaluated the orientalist writings has thrown light on imperialistic interests of the orientalist scholars lately means later on edward said was a scholar and he reevaluated he reexamined he tried to evaluate the orientalist writings again and he threw light or he focused on imperialistic interests of the orientalist scholars according to him there was some imperialistic interest of the orientalist scholars the next ideology is of the nationalistic historiography the writings of indian historians who were trained in the british educational system show an inclination to restore the pride in the ancient glory of india and the self esteem of the indian readers their writings are known as nationalistic historiography nationalistic writings in maharashtra were inspired by vishnu shastri shipronkar he criticized the prejudiced history of ancient india written by british officers the nationalistic history historians tried to seek the golden era of indian history they are at times blamed for ignoring the critical analysis of the historical truth mahadev govind ranade ramkrishna gopal bhandarkar vinayak damodar damodar savarkar rajendra lal mishra ramesh chandra majumdar kashi prasad jaiswal radha kumud mukherjee भगवान लाल इंद्रजी वासुदेव विष्णु मिश्राजी वासुदेव विष्णु मिराशी एंड अनंत सदाशिव अल्टेकर आर द नेम्स ऑफ सम रिनाउंड स्कॉलर्स अमंग द नेशनलिस्टिक हिस्टोरियन इन द नेशनलिस्टिक हिस्टोरियोग्राफी वी आर गोइंग टू सी दैट द राइटिंग्स ऑफ इंडियन हिस्टोरियंस हु वेर ट्रेन्ड बाय द ब्रिटिश एजुकेशनल सिस्टम showed an inclination to restore the pride in the ancient glory of india and the self esteem of the indian readers so in the earlier part we have seen that the writings when orientalist colonial writings we have seen that there were earlier scholars were the britishers and the christian missionaries so these uh, people had ridiculed the indian historiography now these were the nationalistic historians or the indian historians who were trained under the british educational system and they had an inclination to restore the pride which was lost or which was uh, rather misinterpreted by the christian missionaries and the british scholars about the indian glory and they wanted to return the pride of of india the glory of india and the self esteem to the of the indian readers so their writings are known as the nationalistic historiography because the intention of their writing was to restore the pride so whatever the earlier writings were there of the british historians early historians and the uh, uh, christian missionaries were tried to their flaws or their uh, misrepresentations were tried to made good and that's how the glory of india and the self esteem of the indian readers were tried to restore so these were known as the nationalistic historiography nationalistic writings in maharashtra were inspired by vishnu shastri chipronkar he criticized the prejudiced history of ancient india written by british officers so he criticized he said that history of in ancient india which was written by the british officers was based on the prejudice and therefore he criticized it the nationalistic historians tried to seek the golden era of the indian history so they tried to uh, mention more or elaborate more about the golden era of the indian history they are at times blamed for ignoring and critically uh, ignoring the critical analysis of the historical truth so at times they are blamed for ignoring the critical analysis 
it is said that they are they have not critically examined or critically analyzed the historical truth but they were more focused on getting the pride back to india and making good the ancient glory and the self esteem of the indian readers so they at times ignored the critical analysis of the historical truth so then there are some of the names of the renowned scholars among the nationalistic historians so the names which are mentioned ahead are the names of the historian scholars nationalistic historians this is again one more did you know uh, this i have clubbed three did you knows together the first one says justice mahadev govind ranade has explained the background of the rise of maratha empire in great details in his book the rise of maratha power according to him it was not like a sudden uh, suddenly erupted forest fire but the ground of it in maharashtra on the social cultural and religious levels was getting ready for a prolonged period so there is um, a book written by the name the rise of maratha power by Uh, justice mahadev govind ranade and according to him he says that this was not a sudden erupted fire forest means this was not a thing which just suddenly happened but the ground of it or the preparation for it on the social cultural and religious levels was getting ready for a prolonged for a long period of time the next did you know says v k rajwade founded bharat bharat itihas sanshodhak mandal in pune on 7th july 1910 to fa- facilitate historical research the next did you know says human history is defined by the time and space describing any event necessitates that the final portrayal should be spread on the complete canvas of the given time and place only if a balanced combination of the three factors time space and personal personalities is present then only an event does qualify to be called so this is written by vk rajwade so he says that uh, whenever something is expressed about a person the time and space or the time and uh, space is also very important because these things according to him is time space and personalities are very closely connected so a person may act differently at different time and at different situation so at in what situation and at what time uh, a person has reacted to a particular thing or expressed in a particular way is very important so uh, there would be a perfect balance of combination of the three factors um, that is time space and personality then only it does qualify to be a called so so he says that it should portray the perfect picture or a perfect picture should be can be portrayed only when these three all these three factors are taken into consideration like time space and personalities rajwadi is well known for his writings in marathi on varied subjects like history linguistic etymology grammar etc he was of the firm opinion that he sh- that we should write our own history he compiled and edited 22 volumes of marathancha itihasachi sadhane he wrote very scholarly preface to each of his each of the 22 volumes he stated history is the all inclusive image of the past societies he does not include only the stories of political images conspiracies and wars for seizing power he ins- he insisted that history should be written only using the authentic documentary source so rajwade who is very well known for the for his writings in marathi on varied subject on very different subjects like he has written on history he has written on linguistic linguistic that is languages then he has also written on etymology etymology children is the study of the origin of words and the way in which their meaning have changed throughout the history he has also written on grammar he was the uh, he was of the firm opinion that we should write our own history he was uh, very sure on his opinion that we should write on our own history because we are the best people to judge or to uh, experience and uh, express the history that we have experienced he compiled and edited 22 volumes of marathan marathancha itihasachi sadhane so he had uh, compiled and edited 22 volumes of a um, of 
बुक कॉल्ड मराठ्यांच्या इतिहासाची साधने अँड ही रोड अ व्हेरी स्कॉलरी प्रिफेज न प्रिफेज इज अन इंट्रोडक्शन टू अ बुक विच गिव्स यू अन आउटलाईन ऑफ द कंटेंट ऑफ द बुक सो ही हॅज रिटन अ व्हेरी स्कॉलरी स्कॉलरी इज व्हेरी इंटलेक्च्युअल अँड व्हेरी इंटेलिजंट प्रिफेज और इंट्रोडक्शन टू ईच अँड एव्हरी ऑफ हिज ट्वेंटी टू वॉल्युम्स ही ऑल्सो स्टेटेड दॅट हिस्ट्री इज द ऑल इन्क्लुझिव्ह इमेज ऑफ द पास्ट सोसायटीज ही इट डज नॉट इन्क्लूड ओनली द स्टोरीज ऑफ पॉलिटिकल इमेजेस कॉन्स्पिरसीज अँड वॉर्स फॉर सायझिंग पावर सो ही सेज अकॉर्डिंग टू हिम हिस्ट्री इज अन ऑल इन्क्लुझिव्ह इमेज सो हिस्ट्री गिव्स यू अन ऑल राऊंड इमेज ऑफ द पास्ट सोसायटी इट इज नॉट ओनली confined to the stories of political images or conspiracies conspiracies is a secret plan to do something harmful or wars for seizing power seizing power so he insisted that history should be given only using the authentic documentary sources he also was of the opinion or he insisted that history should be written only using the authentic documentary sources so there should be authentic sources based on which history should be written let's move ahead the nationalistic historiography helped in the triggering of in of the independence movement of the indian people against the british in this aspect the book the indian war of independence 1857 written written by vinayak damodar savarkar is of great importance the nationalistic historiography provided a momentum to the writing of regional histories too as a result the attention of historians was drawn to the geographic conditions and history of south indian regions uh, so children the nationalistic historiography helped in the triggering of independence movement triggering is to initiate so uh, the independence movement we can say of india uh, the independence movement of the indian people against the british rule was triggered or was initiated with uh, and a major contribution of it was to the nationalistic historiography helped in the um, initiate initiation of the independence movement in this aspect the book uh, there was a book written in this aspect the indian war of independence 1857 which you can see in the adjacent picture which was written by vinayak damodar savarkar and it is a great uh, it is a book of great importance because it has a, got a lot of contribution to the national uh, to the triggering to triggering the independence movement of the indian people against the britishers the nationalistic historiography provided a momentum to the writing of regional histories too so because of this nationalistic historiography it also gave a direction or it also gave an initiation or you can say a new topic and there on the regional histories were also started uh, started to be written as a result the attention of historians was drawn to the geographic conditions and history of south indian regions so uh, that that is how their attention of the historians was diverted to the um, or, 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 or the and that is how the historians uh, also gave importance to the geographic conditions and history of the south indian regions historiography in the post independence era uh now we have seen um, historiography era wise then we have seen ideology wise now we are going to see historiography in the post independence period that is after the independence now along with writing the dynastic histories the cultural social economic histor- histories were also being written scholars of the post independence era began to feel the need of writing histories of various communities sciences economic system political ideologies cultural aspects etc the the historiography of this era has been influenced mainly by three ideological schools now since we have seen the historiography in the past was also also influenced by the three ideologies similarly the post independence historiography is also influenced by the three ideological schools that is the marxist history subaltern history and the feminist history marxist history the concern for the means of production modes of production and the produ- industrial relations were at the center in the writings of marxist historians accordingly to analyze the impact of every social event of significance has remained the basic theme of marxist historiography marxist historians in india studied the transitions within the caste system 
Among the notable Indian historians who adopted Marxist ideological framework, scholars like Damodar Dharmanand Kosambi, Comrade Shripad Amrut Dange, Ram Sharan Sharma, Comrade Sharad Patil, and have contributed notably. Comrade Dange was one of the founder members of the Indian Communist Party, Primitive Communism to Slavery, a book written by him represents Marxist historiography. Children, the Marxist history focuses or it is more concerned for the means of production, the mode of production and the industrial relations were, the, uh, were at the center of the writing of Marxist historians or these were the things which uh, were concerned uh, for the Marxist historians. So if you see means of production, modes of production and the industrial relations, so this is basically uh, related to the capital you can say or the industries of the society or the capitalistic you can say so accordingly to analyze the impact of every social event or significance has remained the basic theme of marxist historiography so uh, therefore the impact of every social event what impact the uh, social each and every social impact uh, social event was uh, of significance that was the basic theme of Marxist historiography. Marxist historians in India studied the transition within the caste system. So you, we can see that the Marxist historians also studied the transition in the caste system. And uh, the notable historians who adopted Marxist ideological framework were scholars like uh, Damodar Dharmanand Kosambi, Comrade Sripadam Rudange. Ram Charan Sharma, Comrade Sharad Patil and they have contributed notably. Uh, Comrade Dange was one of the founder member of the Indian Communist Party and his book um, Primitive Communism to Slavery represents Marxist historiography. Moving ahead to subaltern history, the seeds of subaltern history are found in the Marxist historiography. That means from Marxist historiography only subaltern history came up. The role of Italian historian Antonio Gramsci is very important in developing the idea that history should be written starting from the bottommost rank of people in the society. In fact, subaltern means the bottommost rank. So children here the focus was more on the bottommost rank of the, peop uh, of the people. That means the very common people of the society because uh, subaltern, in, subaltern in fact means the bottommost rank the lower section of the society so here in the marxist historiography we have seen that it dealt with the uh, means of production modes of production and the industrial relation whereas the subaltern history aims or focuses on the bottommost rank of the uh, people in the society Folklore has been considered as a very important source of writing subaltern history. Ranjit Guha, an Indian historian, played a major role in establishing subaltern history as an important academic school of historiography. However, we may point out that much before the onset, onset of subaltern ideology, similar thoughts were expressed by Mahatma Jyotiba Phule. However, we may point out that much before the onset of subaltern ideology, similar thoughts were expressed by Mahatma Jyotirao Phule and Dr. Baba Sahib Ambedkar. So children, we have seen that uh, subaltern history deals with the uh, bottommost rank of the people. So there has uh, folklore has been considered as the most important source of writing subaltern history and um, Ranjit Guha who is an Indian historian he played a major role in establishing subaltern history as an important ab academic school of historiography however even before the subaltern history came into existence quite before that we can see the similar ideologies which were the ideologies which were similar to subaltern history or the thoughts which were quite similar to subaltern history were expressed by Mahatma Jyotirao Phule and Dr. Baba Saheb Ambedkar. Mahatma Phule unfolded the history of the Shudra, Atishudra communities in his book Gulam Giri. He drew 
attention to the exploitation of women shudras and ati shudras done under the name of religion the term shudra and ati shudra indicates the bottommost ranks in the caste system the role of the people belonging to dalit caste is very significant in the shaping of various cultural and political aspects of india however their role was not duly acknowledged in the colonial and nationalistic historiography dr baba saheb ambedkar focusing on this fact consistently wrote about it two of his books who were the shudras and the untouchables may be cited as examples of history of subaltern type so children we can see that mahatma phule has a great contribution on this uh, topic of subaltern history uh, wherein we can see he has also written a book called gulamgiri which was based on the shudra ati shudra uh, communities and uh, he has also drawn attention to the exploitation of women shudras and ati shudras under the name of religion the term shudra and ati shudra indicates the bottom most ranks in the society or in the caste system so these are the bottom most shudras and ati shudras are the bottom most ranks in the caste system and the role of the people belonging to the dalit caste is very significant in the shaping of various cultural and political aspects of the of india so their contribution or their role of the shudras and ati shudras is actually really, really very important or in, is very significant in the shaping of various cultural and political aspects of india however their role was not duly acknowledged their role was not duly considered or given importance by the colonial and nationalistic historiography so dr ambedkar dr baba saheb ambedkar focuses on his fact on this fact and consistently wrote about it so he focused on this fact and he consistent uh, consistently wrote about it in his two books named who were the shudras and the other book was titled the untouchables and these may be seen as an example of history of subaltern type moving ahead to the feminist history over a significant period of time mainly male scholars were involved in the writing of indian history as a result the role and achievements of women in india in history remain neglected to highlight this fact was a major task faced by the feminist historians also it was important to study and compile the historical writings of women also it was important to study and compile the historical writings of women it was also necessary to rethink on women's position in history so children as we have seen in the subaltern history that the bottommost rank of the society was neglected or those were the things which which has a great contribution or those were the people who influenced or had a significant contribution but were neglected similarly it was also observed that the uh, females of that era or females during the history were also neglected were not involved in the uh, writing of indian history so the uh, the role and achievements of women were also remained neglected was not included into history so to highlight this fact was a major task or was a major challenge faced by the feminist historians also it was very important to study and compile the historical writings of women so whatever uh, historical writings were writ, uh, of the women were there it was very important to study and compile them as well it was also necessary to th- to rethink on women's position in the society it was also important to think the women's society uh, women's position in the society among women authors writing about women in the 19th century ce tarabai shinde was the foremost one she wrote attacking the male dominated so- social system and the caste system her book stri purush tulana published in 1882 is acknowledged as the first feminist book in india in 1888 the book written by pandita ramabai was published entitled the high caste hindu women so we can see there uh, during this era or during the feminist historiography or uh, during in the feminist history there were a uh, few uh, ladies or few women who came in uh, came forward and 
in the 19th century we can uh, tara bai shinde was the foremost one and she wrote a book titled stri purush tulna which was published in 1882 and it was an attack on the male dominated social system and the caste system so she was um, she has expressed her uh, thoughts or her feelings and in that and expressing those uh, uh, thoughts and uh, her feelings she has written a book which uh, which uh, which she felt was the society is dominated by the social system and the caste system male it is a male dominated uh, society and also has a caste system against it attacking it she has written a book called sri purush tulna and this is acknowledged or this is believed as the first feminist book in india so in 1888 again there was a book written by pandita ramabai and it was uh, entitled or it was uh, by the name the high caste hindu women the feminist literature of the post independence era concentrated on the issues like employment of women treatment meted out to them at their workplaces their right to political equality etc among the recently published feminist literature Mira Kosambi's book Crossing Thresholds Feminist Essays in Social History is of importance it contains essays on on the life story of women like Pandita Ramabai and Dr Rukma Bai the first part is practicing lady doctor of India a lot of literature is available unfolding the viewpoint of dalit women in maharashtra dr sharmila regis work is noteworthy in this context her book writing caste writing gender reading dalit women's testimonies includes her essays on the autobiographies of dalit women so children uh, in feminist literature of the post independence era that was more concentrated or more focused on the issues like uh, employment of women then the treatment how they get at their workplaces and uh, the their right to the political equality etc so among the uh, recently published feminist literature mira kosambi's book uh, titled crossing thresholds a uh, feminist essays in social history is a, is a really important one it contains essays of life stories of women like pandita ramabai and dr rukma bai uh, and dr rukma bai was the first practicing lady doctor of india a lot of literature is available unfolding the viewpoint focusing the viewpoint of dalit women in maharashtra now dr sharmila reke uh, reke's work is very noteworthy or you can say it's worth considering in this context and her book entitled writing caste writing gender reading dalit women's testimonies includes the essays or includes her essays on the autobiographies of the dalit women so that is how the problems faced by women uh, on different uh, at their workplace or uh, in the political equality or political uh, background or or even the problems faced by the dalit women are expressed by different female feminist historians in this uh, feminist historiography we have one more did you know publication of marathi riyasat by govinda sakharam sardesai was a mon- momentous achievement in the field of indian historiography his work became so famous that people began to address him as riya saddar he published several several volumes of maratha history okay now there has been a number of indian historians who wrote without embracing a particular ideology among the among them historians like sir jadunath sarkar surendranath sen riya saddar g s sardesai and trambak shankar shezwalkar are noteworthy we have seen uh, till now that uh, the historiography has been divided into three sections uh, depending upon the era then depending upon the ideologies then we have also seen in the modern era also there was based on three ideological schools but besides all these there are few historians who were uh, who wrote without a particular ideology just freely wrote about history so amongst these historians there are uh, sir jadunath sarkar surendranath sen riyasaddar 
जी एस सरदेसाई एंड त्र्यंबक शंकर शेजवालकर एंड देयर कॉन्ट्रीब्यूशन टूवर्ड्स हिस्ट्री इज ऑल्सो नोट वर्दी इन द रिसेंट टाइम्स हिस्टोरियंस लाइक यशवंत दिनकर फड़के रामचंद्र गुहा एट्सेट्रा हैव कॉन्ट्रीब्यूटेड एक्सटेंसिवली टू द हिस्टोरियोग्राफी ऑफ मॉडर्न इंडिया दस इट इज एविडेंट दैट द इंडियन हिस्टोरियोग्राफी हैज बीन इन्फ्लुएंस्ड ग्रेटली बाय द सोशल एंड पोलिटिकल मूवमेंट्स it seems that some part of indian historiography was also developed outside the influence of these movements so we can see that not only based on some ideologies but then there are few historians who were also influenced by the great social and political movements so these some part of the indian history was also developed outside the or because of the influence of the of these movements or because of this Uh, political or social movements so movements have also created an impact on the historians and uh, some part of the historiography is developed out of the indian histori- historiography is also developed because of the influence of these movements that was all we have uh, learnt in historiography indian uh, tradition so i hope you must have enjoyed it as well and uh, it must be a great experience to know about our indian culture in historiography thank you children